Here are the top stories for today, June 23, 2020. President Duterte expresses joy over the progress of the development of a vaccine for COVID-19 worldwide. President Duterte orders DENR Secretary Roy Simatu to oversee efforts to contain COVID-19 in Cebu City. Senator Bongo calls for a thorough review of the Hatid Tulong program amid the rise of cases involving stranded residents. And PhilHealth assures it has enough funds to attend to health services aside from COVID-19. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Malacanang welcomed the result of a UK clinical trial on dexamethasone, which was found to have reduced deaths among severely ill COVID-19 patients. President Rodrigo Duterte is happy to learn that many countries have made significant progress in the development of COVID-19 vaccine. Earlier, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque acknowledged that the steroid has been hailed as a major breakthrough, but pointed out that the findings showed that it could only reduce death by about 30% in critical COVID-19 patients. Ang masabi ko sa inyo na good news is that we believe, and I believe too, that many countries has now perfected some vaccine. Maybe some are haphazard kasi madali yan eh. The quest for vaccine takes time, years. Dito nagmamadali yan. At least we have a medicine that would fight COVID. We definitely welcome it. Although we don't think it's a miracle pill kasi ang findings po, it can save about 30% of seriously ill patients. No, We want a cure that will, serve, that will save 100%, no? if not a majority of those who fall seriously ill. President Duterte has vouched for the integrity of his cabinet members, including Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, after the Ombudsman started a probe into alleged irregularities in the Department of Health's COVID-19 response. In a public address late Monday night, Duterte said he was prepared to face the Ombudsman himself and defend his officials. Duterte believes that none of his officials were involved in anomalies, otherwise they would have already been fired. Given his touch stance against corruption, Duterte said he has repeatedly reminded his officials not to be involved in any suspicious activities. He also assured that the funds used to procure PPE sets and other medical gear were not squandered. With due respect, with due respect to the Ombudsman, uh, the Honorable uh, Arteris, uh, iniimbestiga pa niya. Pero kung ako, kung ako lang ang tanongin, kung ako ang imbestigahin niya, hindi mo po talaga ko sabihin ko na I believed in the honesty and integrity of my people. Ma malinis itong, itong tao ko dito. And I still believe in them. But anyway, uh, yun ang sitwasyon. Itaya ko yung reputasyon ko as president na sa lahat. Walang kalukuhan. Gusto ko lang malaman ng tao na itong sa gobyerno na ito, sakripisyo ito. I'm just appealing to their sense of patriotism and their love for their country. Duterte appealed to the public to recognize that public service comes with sacrifice. President Rodrigo Duterte has directed DENR Secretary Roy Simato to oversee the COVID-19 response in Cebu City as cases in the area are soaring. Mga kaigsuna na ako sa Cebu, both sa mga siyudad o probinsya. Akong ipadala si General Simato. All he has to do, not for permission, but just to advise uh, Manila here that uh, these things are being done, these things are not yet done, and these things must be done.
Without dropping names, Duterte said his decision to assign Simato in Cebu City was because local executives were blaming each other for the increase in COVID-19 cases in the area. He noted that there were bound to be a derailment of programs when officials started pointing fingers at each other. Simato, who was also present during the televised meeting with members of the IATF, accepted Duterte's assignment and vowed to do his best. I fully accept your challenge uh, you gave uh, for Cebu, Mr. President. Going to Cebu, uh, uh, when uh, the Senator, Senator Bong uh, talked to me, and I said, uh, this is really an honor for me. It was uh, probably the fate or destiny, Mr. President, to be doing things to save the lives of some people in Cebu. Uh, at this uh, time of pandemic. Cebu City was reverted to enhanced community quarantine due to the rise in COVID-19 cases. Meanwhile, the entire province of Cebu was placed under the general community quarantine. Malacanang said the opening of classes cannot be moved unless the Congress passes a law allowing it to be pushed to a later date. This after Vice President Lenny Robredo urged the Department of Education to move the opening of classes to a date where schools are more prepared to implement distance learning, particularly for students with special needs. The Department of Education, or DepEd, has set the opening of school year 2020 to 2021 on August 24, 2020, while the end of school year will be on April 30, 2021. Education Secretary Leonor Briones vowed to comply with Duterte's directive, saying students will remain at home indefinitely and instead utilize blended and distance learning methods in light of the health crisis. Well, as far as the actual date of classes, may batas po yan, no? we have to comply with the law, which is the last week of August. No? Um, unless Congress will pass a, a law no? um, providing that we could open on a later date. President Duterte will soon resume visiting military camps across the country months after isolating himself in Malacanang and in Davao due to the threat of COVID-19. Duterte is known to go around the country and visit military camps to talk to soldiers and extend financial assistance and other forms of aid. He expressed exasperation over having to stay indoors but accepted the need to follow government protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19. If there is anybody who wants to be out to enjoy and even to live life normally, ako. Ako yung ayaw talaga sa itong uh, lockdown, lockdown. I hate it. I do not want even myself. Pero ang sabi ko sa inyo, kung kayo hindi makatiis at tinamaan kayo, sorry na lang. Uh, in the coming days, I intend to go around the country. Magbisita pa ako ng kampo ng mga military. So I'll have just have to take precautions. The Department of Transportation expressed their disappointment and frustration after Senator Nancy Binay said its ongoing EDSA busway project is totally unrealistic and bound to fail. Binay said the project is a virtual experiment, hilaw at minadaling plano sa EDSA. In particular, she said putting bus lanes in the two innermost lanes in EDSA will inconvenience passengers as they will have trouble crossing EDSA, particularly senior citizens and others who might have trouble climbing up elevated walkways. In an open letter addressed to Binay, the DOTR said the EDSA busway plan is actually a takeoff from the Bus Rapid Transit System or BRT and the bus median lane usage that has been proven to be one of the more effective mass transport systems in the world. It said various transport experts and stakeholders were asked to engage and coordinate with the project, including commuter groups, economists, and community leaders, and they all shared the same plan. The DOTR called on BNI to attend one of its online video conferences to air issues, concerns, or to provide inputs and recommendations, saying their road transport officers are most willing to come and visit her at her office at her convenience. Still to come, 
Senator Bongo calls for a thorough review of the Hatid Tulong program amid the rise of cases involving stranded residents. The DTI plans to invite bicycle manufacturers to invest in the Philippines amid the pandemic. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa bahay nagsisimula ang kaalaman at paghahanda. Kasabay ng muling pagsisimula natin ay ang bagong pamumuhay para sa ikabubuti ng lahat. Sundin ang mga panuntunan ng inyong lokal na pamahalaan at lugar na pupuntahan. Sundin palagi ang physical distancing. Pag-uwi, maghugas ng kamay at ihanda ng mabuti ang mga ilulutong pagkain. Kapag may nararamdaman, katulad ng mga sintomas ng COVID-19, kumonsulta sa doktor online gamit ang mga iba't ibang paraan ng telemedicine upang hindi na muna umalis ng bahay. Kung hirap huminga, magpakonsulta ka agad sa pinakamalapit na health facility. Maaari ring tawagan ang inyong Barangay Health Emergency Response Team o BHERT. Ang mga kapamilyang may kasalukuyang karamdaman at mga nakatatanda ay dapat mas ingatan. Kung may nabago man sa aming buhay, ito ay ang pagdudobleng ingat para mapangalagaan ang isa't isa at ang kapwa. Dahil ang natutunan sa bahay ay sandata para sa new normal. Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo urged for a thorough review of the implementation of Hatid Tulong initiatives following an increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the provinces attributed to the program. Since Hatid Tulong is a directive from President Duterte, Go said it is important to make sure that proper health and safety protocols are in place in order to avoid the spread of COVID-19. Hatid Tulong initiatives are meant to help locally stranded individuals, repatriated OFWs, and other affected Filipinos return to their home provinces. He said proper coordination must be conducted to make sure that receiving local government units are willing and ready to accept their constituents. Meanwhile, Go also welcomes calls to review the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program. It is a long-term state-of-nation approach aimed at decongesting Metro Manila and spurring rural development at the same time. Go said the temporary suspension of the Balik Probinsya program will give more time for receiving LGUs to prepare their communities. PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar also extends help in implementing the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program. A series of network briefing news episodes hosted by the PCOO has highlighted the vast agricultural lands in provinces that can be tapped by local governments in providing livelihood opportunities for its residents and BP2 beneficiaries. On weekends, Andanar visits areas outside Metro Manila to identify resources that provinces can offer to returning residents. He recently visited Lucena City in Quezon Province where he inspected the ongoing port expansion and rehabilitation of the Lucena Fish Port Complex. He also visited Benguet, Nueva Ecija, and Batangas. In its latest episode, Andanar expressed his interest to visit the municipality of Magsaysay, Davao del Sur and create promotional materials that will showcase the municipality's assets and resources. The Philippine Navy will transport locally stranded individuals simultaneously with other naval missions to optimize the deployment of its ship's assets. Earlier, the Navy strategic sea lift vessel BRP Daval del Sur transported 402 LSIs and three Filipino expatriates to Iloilo. 
It also delivered 2,508 boxes of personal protective equipment and other medical supplies to Cebu. Philippine Navy Flag Officer in Command Vice Admiral Giovanni Carlo Bacordo called this humanitarian mission the biggest so far in terms of a Navy vessel transporting LSIs. Let us take a look at the efforts of our local governments to contain the spread of COVID-19. In Cebu, the Department of Health is ramping up the fight against COVID-19 by deploying more medical frontliners. The region has deployed 50 registered nurses and 100 underboard physicians to reinforce the existing healthcare workers in private hospitals. 100 deputized physicians who are all underboard medicine graduates are being ready to serve like postgraduate interns under the close supervision of licensed doctors. Village officials are also reminded to utilize their barangay isolation centers for asymptomatic persons as well as those who experience only mild and moderate symptoms to prevent swamping the hospitals. In Iloilo City, Mayor Jerry Trenya said the city could be one of the first local government units in the country that could recover from COVID-19. He said Iloilo City has established hospitals, intensive care units and isolation rooms as well as testing centers for COVID-19 patients. Trenya said the machine for the polymerase chain reaction or PCR tests are already available and the city government is just waiting for the laboratory. He said he is also coordinating with governors of Western Visayas because so that their activities will be aligned. He said fast crafts flying the Iloilo Bacolod route already commenced on June 20 and there are also talks about commencement of flights at the Iloilo International Airport. In Agusan del Sur, all persons entering the province would have to undergo mandatory rapid testing starting Tuesday. Agusan del Sur Governor Santiago Cane Jr. said the provincial task force COVID-19 has recommended that the province continue to be under the modified general community quarantine with new guidelines and health protocols as the number of cases increase. Those who wish to enter Agusan del Sur from identified areas with confirmed local transmission will be subjected to free rapid testing in designated testing areas. If found negative, the person will be placed under quarantine for 14 days, while those who are found positive will be brought to the provincial quarantine area for the confirmatory swab test. As of June 22nd, Agusan del Sur has five confirmed COVID-19 cases. 36 probable cases and 8 suspect cases. Bayugan City has one confirmed COVID-19 case, 6 probable cases and 3 suspect cases. In our business news, with the popularity of bicycles booming during the COVID-19 pandemic, the DTI plans to invite bicycle manufacturers to set up shop in the Philippines to meet the demand. The Department of Trade and Industry targets to invite bicycle manufacturers to invest in the Philippines as demand for it is increasing amid the pandemic. Under Secretary Seferino Rodolfo said, it is an opportune time for bicycle manufacturers to locate in the Philippines as demand continues to rise. Rodolfo said the Board of Investments is pursuing talks with a big Taiwanese bicycle manufacturer to locate their factory in the Philippines. Investments here will also create job opportunities for many Filipinos that were displaced during the pandemic. Meanwhile, at least 6,000 jobs in business process outsourcing companies will put a silver lining on job opportunities amid the health crisis affecting the country's workforce. Labor Secretary Sylvester Bellio III said the global economic downturn caused by the pandemic has brought the resurgence of the BPO industry with many companies abroad eyeing offices in Metro Manila, Clark, and Cebu areas. Bellio also ruled the Philippine Statistics Authority survey report of a 7 million job displacement as mere estimates, saying only 2.7 million laid-off workers were officially reported to the department. He cautioned employers against haphazard dismissal of workers. In Pampanga, over 20,000 workers in 361 companies inside the Clark Freeport are now back to work since the lockdowns were eased starting last May 16. The Clark Development Corporation said more locators in the Freeport are getting back on track. 
It said the employees are happy to return to work as they start to adapt to the new normal amid the challenges being faced due to COVID-19. Companies in return are willing to observe the protocols imposed by CDC, which are helpful to ensure their safety inside their workplaces. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. Up next, PhilHealth assures it has enough funds to attend to health services aside from COVID-19. And the Vatican recognizes the Diocese of Maasin for having its parishes switch to solar power. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. PhilHealth on Monday assured members that it has enough money to fund all the health services it provides apart from the health packages for patients infected with COVID-19. PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales said they expect to spend 40 billion pesos on COVID-19 while the company's reserve is at about 130 billion. PhilHealth has paid up to the end of April about 52.5 billion pesos. In a congressional hearing last week, Morales called for a general delay of the implementation of the Universal Health Care Act and the expansion of primary health care benefits due to lack of funds. Morales pointed out that the decision on the implementation of the UHC would not come from him but from the policymakers. In reaction to Morales' statement, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque reminded him that President Duterte certified the UHC as urgent and urged him instead to address corruption issues within PhilHealth. He also denied Morales' claim that he is eyeing a position at PhilHealth. Roque said Morales' claim could be considered a demolition job. Earlier, Roque accused Morales of failing to act on alleged corruption within the PhilHealth. Morales, for his part, insisted that there were insufficiencies in Phil Health operation and not corruption, as Roque had claimed. Meanwhile, Roque said he would rather leave it to Duterte to decide on issues besetting the state-run insurance firm. Presidential Human Rights Committee Secretariat Undersecretary Severo Catura cautioned against the politicization of press freedom in relation to the cyber libel conviction of Rappler CEO Maria Reza. Katura said politicizing human rights could weaken societal structures and undermine efforts to uphold them, contrary to claims that Reza's conviction is a blow to press freedom in the country. Katura maintained that Reza abused her freedom and was found guilty in court. He added that the complainant, businessman Wilfredo King, had his own right to seek justice for Rappler's supposed unfair news report. Katura also said that accountability, non-discrimination, transparency, and rule of law were met during the whole legal process. He added that the country has taken its human rights obligations very seriously, especially freedom of the press. The DSWD is distributing cash aid under the Social Amelioration Program to over 100,000 poor families in Soksarjen. 
Meanwhile, the DSWD pointed to stringent validation measures as the cause of delay in the distribution of SAP aid. More on this from Janice Cade. Over 100,000 poor families in Sok Sarjen who are affected by the COVID-19 crisis will receive cash assistance in the coming days under the Social Amelioration Program. The Department of Social Welfare and Development in Region 12 said the additional beneficiaries were qualified families not included in the first tranche of the SAP. The beneficiaries will receive the 5,000 pesos assistance starting this week. Meanwhile, the DSWD said the stringent validation process in determining eligible beneficiaries caused major delays in the distribution of the COVID-19 financial aid. During the House hearing on the issues hounding the first tranche of SAP on Monday, DSWD Undersecretary Danilo Pamonag said the delay was further amplified by the grievances received from waitlisted families. Other challenges include mobility constraints to isolated and disadvantaged areas, exposure to health risks, security threats posed by rebels, and threats from disgruntled individuals. Malacan Yang, meanwhile, said the distribution of the second tranche of SAP aid will be faster once the, the duplication of beneficiaries is completed. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said that DSWD is currently working on validating the list of beneficiaries to ensure that it is free from duplicates. He expressed confidence that beneficiaries would be able to receive their cash aid in two days since the government will now be using automated teller machines, debit cards, GCash, and PayMaya. In other news, Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano on Monday said the House of Representatives would help identify the most efficient way to distribute the financial assistance under SAP. Cayetano maintained the need for house-to-house -house distribution, a transparent data monitoring system, an accessible grievance mechanism, and active coordination and communication among all stakeholders. The House hearing seeks to look into the distribution by the DSWD of the first tranche of SAP worth 100 billion pesos in financial aid for 18 million low-income households under the Bayanihan to Heal as One app. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Government troops have foiled an attack by suspected members of the New People's Army at a construction project in Sarangani Province. Marita Mawai will tell us more. Government militiamen foiled on Sunday an attempt by suspected New People's Army rebels to harass workers assigned on a road project in a remote village in Maitung Town, Sarangani. Nine CAFGU personnel held off around 20 NPA rebels from a base of Jargon Construction John Mark Builders in Barangay Zion. No one was reported hurt among the CAFGU personnel while around 20 families evacuated from the area. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police is preparing to file arson charges against the NPA rebels who burned down three heavy equipments last week in a quarry site at the boundary of Tibuli and Soralia towns in South Cotabato. Police identified the rebels involved in the attack operate as members of the NPA's Guerrilla Front 72. The PNP will also charge leaders of the NPA Far South Mindanao region after the group claimed responsibility for the attack. Police initially eyed extortion as the motive for the NPA attack that destroyed several heavy equipment worth around 20 million pesos. In northern Samar, a notorious NPA responsible for various extortion activities was killed while resisting arrest in an upland village in Palapag town over the weekend. Saldi Meraya alias Podiot, a finance officer of the NPA in the province, was killed in a brief firefight in Bagakai village. The military is optimistic that Meraya's death will lessen the extortion activities and resource generation of the communist terrorist group in the Pacific towns of northern Samar. In Negros Oriental, the local government unit of Mabinay and the 11th Infantry Battalion of the Philippine Army extended assistance to the family of a suspected NPA member who was killed in a recent encounter with government troops. The financial assistance was handed over Sunday to the family of Isaias Ravelista alias Kajabar. Ravelista was among five suspected NPA members killed in an encounter with government troops last June 18 at Sitio Talingting in Barangay Lungay of the said town. 
Meanwhile, a top military official scored the NPA for destroying the family ties among its combatants and supporters. Lieutenant Colonel Julio Cesar Paolo, the Army's 23rd Infantry Battalion commander, said that based on the accounts of former rebels, the NPA would forcefully separate its members from their families while inside the movement. Paolo's criticism came after the 23rd IB marked Father's Day on Sunday with former rebels at its headquarters in Agusan del Norte. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Moahe. The Philippine Council for Health Research and Development has approved a telepsychiatry project for overseas Filipino workers in Kuwait. The project aims to establish and evaluate an overseas telepsychiatry program in Kuwait to provide immediate mental health services to OFWs. DOST Secretary Fortunato de la Peña said the project will build upon the telepsychiatry software and programs deployed in Cagayan de Oro, which has been proven successful in providing psychiatric services. The Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, or OWA, will assist in the recruitment of participants who could avail of consultations at their respective OWA offices in Kuwait. Psychiatrists based in the Philippines, particularly those from Southern Philippines Medical Center, would do the consultation, diagnosis, and treatment. The project has a proposed timeline of one year. In our foreign news, U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive order Monday that bars many new employment-based visas from being issued this year, including the type of visas generally used for high-skilled workers. In addition to H-1-B visas, Trump's order bars his administration from issuing new H-4 visas for the spouses of H-1B and H-2B visas holders and H-2B visas for seasonal workers and L visas for executives at large companies for the rest of the year. J visas for education will also be halted by the immigration. Over half a million people are expected to be prevented from entering the country legally on the employment visas. The decision to block the new visas is a protectionist effort by the president to shield American workers from foreign competition for jobs as the U.S. struggles to recover from the economic devastation caused by the coronavirus. The Vatican has acknowledged the Diocese of Maasin in southern Leyte for switching to solar energy, a first in the history of the Catholic Church. The Holy See recognized the Diocese of Maasin as the first diocese in the world to equip all parishes with solar panels. In 2018, Maasin Diocese allowed the wide-scale installation of solar panels in its 42 parishes, with the help of Wegen, a net generation energy tech business. It also partnered with the said company to encourage the use of solar energy in church institutions and communities. The diocese was featured in a book entitled Journeying Towards Care for Our Common Home, five years after Laudato Si. The book released on June 18, which marks the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si, aims to guide Catholics on how to bring out concrete ecological actions. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte expresses joy over the progress of the development of a vaccine for COVID-19 worldwide. President Duterte orders DENR Secretary Roy Simatu to oversee efforts to contain COVID-19 in Cebu City. Senator Bongo calls for a thorough review of the Hatid Tulum program amid the rise of cases involving stranded residents. And PhilHealth assures it has enough funds to attend to health services aside from COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. 
For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day and stay safe.